Hi everyone, in this video we are going to see how to deploy a Cloud Run function for API based trigger. Before that, let's try to understand what is Cloud Run function. Cloud Run function is a Cloud Run which is a serverless platform provided by GCP. Here you can define your stateless containers or you can also define your function which is a source that is deployed to a GCP platform. With Cloud Run, GCP will take care of all the infrastructure related things such as scalability, memory, CPU, etc. Based on the load, it can scale up and as soon as load is going down, it can also decrease the instances and then it can go up to zero instance based on your configuration. We have two different types of deployment, container and the function. For the container, you need to define your container image and then you can deploy it to the GCP platform. Here we have two different types of service, service and the job. And in the deployment type container, you are writing your code, you are creating a container image and then that image will be deployed to the GCP platform. You can define your APIs or microservices or you can define web application. You can also define a stream processing or batch processing systems within Cloud Run as a service or as a job. Another type of deployment is function. This is what we are going to talk about in this video. For the function, we just need to write a code and then that code will be deployed to the GCP platform. Here, we need not to create our container image. But with this, we have a restriction and that is the code that we are writing will have a specific structure and that is based on the functions framework API defined by GCP. For different languages, we have functions framework API. We can write your function within Java, Python, .NET, Go, Ruby, etc. And for each language, there is a different functions framework API. And based on that framework, you can write your code in a specific structure. Once you have written your code, you can deploy that particular code within Cloud Run function. Cloud Run function will be triggered based on different events. It could be an API call wherein you are calling an API triggering the Cloud Run function. It can also be based on events such as messages published to a pub sub topic, or it can also be based on a file uploaded to a GCS bucket. It can also be based on the data updated in a database or you can also trigger your Cloud Run function based on some scheduled job within GCP. In this video, we are going to see how we can define a Cloud Run function for API based trigger. So let's get started. For creating any GCP service, first of all, you need to have one account within Google Cloud. And then you can write the service within the console or you can write it outside and then deploy it with the help of G Cloud utility. Right now in this video, we are going to create a service with the help of GCP console. For going to any service, you can either search from the search bar or you can search the For Cloud Run function, you can select either Cloud Run or you can search for Cloud Run functions. If you select for Cloud Run functions, it will open up a dashboard wherein you will be able to see all the services. These services are part of Cloud Run but with a specific type of filter function. For Cloud Run service or Cloud Run job, you will see deployment type as container. Right now, within this particular project, I don't have any service, so this list is empty. Now we can create a service from this option. For creating a Cloud Run, you can click on service or job and then you can create the service. For creating a Cloud Run function, you can click on write a function. Here, it has opened up a window wherein you need to just define some of the configuration. For the function, you can define the name of the service. Let's give it a name, demo, have an HTTPS Cloud Run function. Here, we are going to create a Cloud Run function, which will expose an API endpoint. And whenever we will call that endpoint, it will trigger the Cloud Run function. Here, you need to provide a region. I'm going to deploy it within ACS South 2. You can select any region where you want to deploy your service. Based on this, you can see here, we have got one endpoint URL. This URL has a couple of information. This is the name of service. And then you have project number. This is the region where you want to deploy the service. And finally, dot run dot app. Here we have option to provide the runtime. There are different kind of languages supported, .NET, Go, Java, Ruby, Python, etc. And for each language, you can see different versions are supported. We are going to create a Cloud Run function within Java. I'm going to select Java 21. You can select any language. 
all of the configuration will remain same except for the part wherein we will write the code. Right now, I have selected the runtime as Java 21. Then we need to select the trigger. For API calls, you need not to define any trigger. This is the default. Whenever you will deploy this cloud run function, it will be exposed by this endpoint. And whenever this API will be called, it will trigger the cloud run function. For other event-based triggers, you need to provide some configuration over here. This is what we will discuss in next video. Now we can provide the option to apply authentication on the specific request. Here we have option to allow authentication. In this particular case, this API can be called with the help of user's access token or we can allow unauthenticated invocations. In this case, you need not to provide any authentication token. We have some of the option for the Cloud run functions in terms of billing, we can select either request based or instance based. In case of request based billing, whenever request will be coming to this particular cloud run function, then the cloud run function will be built accordingly based on the time spent on that particular request. In case of instance based, billing will be done throughout the life cycle of a specific instance. If the instance is running, then throughout the life cycle of that particular instance, billing will be done accordingly. So you can select any of the options based on your requirement. We have option to provide this auto scaling. In this case, based on the number of requests coming into a particular cloud run function, there can be multiple instances running. We can define a minimum number of instances here. If it is zero, that means there will be no instance running unless there is any request. Based on the request, it will trigger the instance process that request for a while it will remain up and then if there is no request coming in then it will go down in case of manual scaling we can define the number of instances so whatever number we will define over here those many instances will be running all the time we have option to provide the traffic control if we want this api to be called from anywhere then we can select option all if we want to restrict this api call from a specific project or from the vpc or we can also control it based on the external application load balancer as well. Whatever configuration we will select, the request will be restricted accordingly. Right now, we are going to select all. We have some option to provide the container, volume, network, and security related configuration. In case of container, ideally, you will be defining this configuration when you are creating a cloud run service. You will see the same window, but for cloud run functions, you don't need to provide the container configuration. However, you can provide the resources related configuration such as memory, CPU, etc. Whatever memory you need for your cloud run function, you can define that. Similarly, you can define the number of CPUs required for your cloud run function. We can also provide the variables and secrets. These are the environment variables which will be provided to the cloud run function. Here, I have defined this test variable. Now, we can read this within the code and accordingly, it will read that value from the dynamic configuration that we have provided here. We have option to provide the secrets as well. If we want such as password or any other secret information to be part of the cloud run function, then we can create a secret within GCP and then we can refer a specific version of that secret within environment. If you need a specific cloud bucket to be mounted within GCP cloud run function, then you can add the volume. First of all, you need to create a volume and then you can mount that volume. For creating a volume, you can select this option from here. You can create a volume linking to a specific cloud bucket, and then that will be mounted within GCP cloud run function. So whenever we will mount this volume, that means the file will be accessed as a local file system. We have option to provide the networking. So we can select any of these options. In terms of security, we can define a service account. If our Cloud Run function requires to access any other service, then we can give the permission to a specific service account and then attach that service account here with the Cloud Run function. For managing the encryption, we have option to select the Google Manage Encryption or we can also provide our own key. In this case, we need to provide the key. These are the basic configuration. Whenever we deploy a Cloud Run function, that is called a revision. Every time we are making any change in the Cloud Run function, it will create another revision. So at a time there can be multiple revision and for a specific revision, we can control the scaling. We can define the minimum number of instances as well as the maximum number of instances. If we will define a minimum number of instances here, it will override the setting that 
is what we have selected here for the auto scaling but if we have selected the manual scaling in that case this particular configuration will not impact anything because for manual scaling there will be a fixed number of instances that is what we have defined here it will not change as per the revisions now with this configuration i can just deploy it right now we haven't defined any code the service is created it has created the revision and now it has also enabled the traffic to this particular revision we have this api endpoint to test this we can click on test and from here it will give you an option to provide the input body query parameters header etc based on that it has updated this curl command this curl command i can run from my local system from the postman or i can also test it from the test in cloud shell if i click on test in cloud shell it has copied the command and i just need to enter here based on that it has written the response this is the default code deployed to the gcp cloud run function now we can update the code within this particular window here for java 21 you can see we have got one dependency file this contain the functions framework api and here we have got one package and the class this class is an entry point for the cloud run function whenever this api will be called this class will be called and the service method will be called and this is what happening internally whenever we will deploy this cloud run function it will deploy it as a container and gcp platform is going to trigger the service method based on whatever entry point we have defined over here for different kind of events we have different implementation that is coming from the functions framework api if you select node or python or any other language then again you will see the same kind of implementation and it is also implementing the functions framework api here we have google cloud platforms documentation for different languages and based on those languages you can see how we can add the dependencies for java we have maven or we have general based dependencies similarly for different languages you will see those dependencies and then it has defined a way to write the interface code based on the code that we have defined within the specific service method then it will trigger that particular code when the api will be called for different kind of event based function we have different way of writing the code and this is what you can also see within the cloud run documentation and here how to write a function for http functions you can see the code here for different languages all of them are making use of the functions framework api and then for the event based function you can see the code here now we can make changes in this particular code if you want to update the package we can update it here say dot press and we can also change the name of the class here as well we need to update the entry point right now this cloud run function takes the request and the response object from the request it is doing nothing but in the response object it is returning hello world i want to change this and i have defined the code here within code bridge package hello http function this code is reading the request object and converting it into the json object and then printing the request body path and the method and after that it is returning the response in a json here we have input payload message and then the content type as application json for this particular dependency apart from the dependency that we have here functions framework api we need logging as well as the json library once we have updated that let's deploy this we have one revision created four minutes back so all the traffic is going to this particular revision so whenever we are testing this the api will return the same response now whenever the new revision will be deployed the traffic will go to that particular revision here within the test command if we look at the curl you can see here we have authorization header because we have selected the required authentication then we need to pass the authentication token and this curl command is actually generating a token with the help of g cloud or print identity token command i have already configured that in my local system so if i generate this gcloud identity token command it has generated this pairer token and this token is getting passed to the authorization header now here you can see this revision is deployed we have all the traffic going to the latest revision we can update this here by manage traffic and we can define the revisions and accordingly we can update what percentage of the traffic need to go to the specific revision so this can be used for the canary deployment right now with this test command let's change this here name bp 
Accordingly, it has updated this curl command. We can test it in the cloud shell. In the same way, we can test this in the local system. So I'm going to copy this complete curl command. And from here as well, I can test it. It has returned the response now, input payload name BP. So whatever input we have provided that is coming in the input payload. That means our deployment is done and it is routing to the latest revision. This URL we can access from the postman here. If I just call this post API, pass some input data, let's press this here. It is failing for the 403 forbidden. That means this user is not authorized to access this particular API. For that purpose, we need to provide the authorization token and that is what we have generated here. We can utilize this token if we update this payload token here. Now you can see we have got the output. Similarly, if we call the put API, we can call this API. If I call the get API, in that case, I'll remove the body from here. We are getting the response for the get as well. Whatever code we have written so far is independent of the method or the path. You can pass any path variable or query parameters and you can call any get put post method, etc. We have deployed the cloud run function for the HTTPS trigger and we are able to test it from the local system and from the console. In the next video, we will see how we can deploy a cloud run function for event based trigger. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and happy coding.